The ArcGIS platform, it includes a wide variety of imagery and raster analysis tools. It helps you find patterns and unlock information in your imagery. ArcGIS enables unique image processing capabilities by way of raster functions. So what's raster functions? It's essentially image processing algorithms that we provide out of the box to process your imagery either on the fly or to process your imagery and create persisted results. So to give you a better understanding of the capabilities of raster functions or the power of raster functions, here's a data set, the Landsat of the world. This is 750 terabytes of imagery. It's not a pre-processed cache. As I zoom in, my imagery is being dynamically mosaiced and it's processed on the fly. So it's being composited, a convolution filter is applied, it's enhanced and pan sharpened, everything is being done on the fly. Given the spectral depth, the number of bands of the Landsat data, I can easily switch between multiple information products. So for instance, I could switch to the color infrared representation where you can see vegetation pop out, or a geological representation where geological features stand out. Or here's a bathymetric rendition. Here essentially features are easily visible along a shallow water radius. Now, given the temporal depth of the Landsat data, I can easily switch between temporal slices and look at different parts of the world. So here's the Lake County, area of Lake County. Back in 2015, a lot of you are probably aware of the fires that have taken place over there. So here's one of the areas that was affected. This is what it looked like before the fires. And this is what the data set looked like after the fires. Again, this is a single image service and everything that you're seeing is being done on the fly. I can compare the two different data sets, two different time periods, and I can apply change detection and everything that's in cyan is basically a change in landscape. Further on, I can apply this difference mask take our visualizing a step further, our visualization a step further to a little bit of analysis. And here I've essentially just quantified how much of this burn scar has really occurred. So moving from a terrestrial application to the oceans. Our ocean scientists, they're increasingly starting to adopt raster analysis for a wide variety of use cases, such as seafloor mapping, seafloor characterization, and bathymetric classification. So taking our analysis beyond just multispectral imagery, here's another data set. This is also global in nature. We, we created this for the oceans community. This is the HICOM data set. There's seven day forecast imagery and 30 day hindcast imagery. The data set is essentially multi-dimensional data set. So we have data from multiple variables a dimension of depth and a dimension of time. Using the power of raster functions and image services, I can literally jump through different variables. Right, so that was a sea, seawater temperature. Here's the northward seawater velocity. You have the seawater salinity. And we go back to the seawater temperature. So you see how easily I've actually on the fly stepped through different variables that's available within this multidimensional data set. I can now add in the dimension of time. Like I said, it's multidimensional and temporal and it has this dimension of depth. So I can see what the data set looked like seven days before, what it looks like today, or what it could look like seven days down the line. Adding in the dimension of depth, I can look at the data set at different depth levels. So I'll take a couple seconds quickly to actually jump to 
an application that's using the same data set. And here, essentially, I'm showing you patterns. So I've done a little bit of visualization, a little bit of an, an analysis, and this is essentially just showing you patterns. So you can see how there's a gradient and the decrease in temperature over, over a period of time. This essentially is because of seasonality. Likewise, you can see the change in temperature over the dimension of depth. So everything you saw, quickly summarizing what you've seen so far, everything you saw, all of the processing, all of the visualization, the analysis was done on the fly. It's a completely different approach to work with imagery, to process imagery. There's no data redundancy, there's no latency when you're creating derived information products. And since all of this processing is done on the raw pixel, we've maintained maximum pixel fidelity. Now, switching from the web to a more familiar environment, your GIS, your environment. Here's our Chase Pro. We're looking at uh, the south of Florida. I've received data from the NOAA Hydrographic Survey. This is LiDAR data. I received it as bag files, and as you can see, bag files are now natively supported with an ArcGIS Pro. My objective here is essentially to extract coral reefs. And to do that, I'm going to be using raster functions. So first, I'll just give you a quick rundown on raster functions with an ArcGIS Pro. Out of the box, we provide you with a slew of raster functions, over 100 different raster functions. You can easily apply these functions, all of these functions, on a raster, or you can chain them together and create your custom function chain. So quickly switching back to my use case, I've just zoomed into an area that is known to have a lot of uh, coral reefs. Now clearly, this is 32-bit floating point data, so it can't be really used for visualization or for visual interpretation purposes. So I can apply either a hill shade, or in this case, I have my own custom function chain. Apply this on the source data. All of a sudden, this is the same data set. In a matter of clicks, I can actually visualize, and I have more visual context now. So let me crack open the function chain. And this is what the chain looks like behind the scenes. To start with, I've extracted the quality band. I really don't need the quality band for visualization purposes. Next, I've done an elevation void fill, essentially filling out all the gaps that you saw in the data set. And lastly, I applied my sh shaded relief. So that was visualizing the data, right? Now I want to extract features. To extract features, we're basically taking it into analysis. I'm going to go ahead, apply another function chain. Let's take a peek. What does it look like? It's a fairly complicated function chain wherein I've chained together a bunch of functions to actually eventually create this information product. I'm performing texture analysis. Each one of these functions can be popped up. You can tweak the parameters as required. So close this. Apply this. Again, in a couple clicks, here's my delineated coral leaves. So it's still a raster. I can move on ahead, convert this to a vector data set, like in this case, and now it can be used across my GIS. So I've just used my geoprocessing tool that converts a raster data set, vectorize the data set, and now I can query different attributes for this data set. So where I started from, I started off with a raster did perform visualization using raster functions, performed analytics using raster functions, vectorized it, and once in the vector world, it's amenable to any form of GIS modeling. Right? Now I'll switch to my next use case. So this second demo, it shows an aerial LiDAR-based bathymetric survey east of Hollywood, Florida. OK, here I'd like to identify borrow areas for uh, marine sand that's used in beach nourishment project to restore uh, an eroding shoreline. Now, automating the delineation of these areas allow quantifying and monitoring the spatial scale of the disturbance. Again, this is 32-bit floating point data. 
So step one is I'd go on ahead, apply a raster function, which would be the shaded relief. I have this function applied, and this is what my data set looks like. And clearly, you can see my uh, borrows, my sand borrows in here. So the next step that I do is I do not have the data set, what it looked like prior to capture. So I've essentially modeled the data set. I've created, I've extracted this area, applied a statistics function, and modeled the data. And now you can see what the data possibly looked like before the dredging process began. This is what it looks like currently after the dredging process. I go on ahead, apply my geoprocessing tool, the cut fill process, specify my input raster, Here's my after raster. Run this process, and this is the result of my processing. It perfectly lines up, and there's the volume that I was looking for. So you see how I actually quickly switched from source raw imagery to an information product. So summarizing, or the key takeaway here, there is a wealth of data that's available out there. We've got rich tools to visualize that data on the fly or to create persistent results. Now, you are domain experts in ocean science. You really don't have to be remote sensing specialists to do the analysis or the processing or the visualization that I just did. ArcGIS, it provides you with a collection of tools to actually process the imagery as required. We also provide you with tools to perform object-based image analysis on multidimensional ocean data sets in your environment, your GIS environment. So I've explored some of the physical features of the seafloor. We'll remain at the seafloor for the next demo where Marjean from the Spatial Stats team will explore seagrass abundance.